So before I talk about specifically the, the company Monaghan Biosciences that I work for, I want to talk um, a small bit about our parent company, and that's Monaghan Mushrooms. And you might or might not be aware of Monaghan Mushrooms, but Monaghan Mushrooms is the second largest fresh mushroom producer in the world, uh, behind Monterey Mushrooms in the, in the US. Um, we are the largest fresh mushroom compost producer in the world. Um, we have over 3,500 employees and we, um, we have sites across Canada, Ireland, UK, Netherlands, Belgium and Germany. Um, and to give you an idea then, uh, you can see we sell product then into, into 36 different countries. We are, as I said, a global company. We have uh, 13 centrally owned growing farms. Um, we have a number of satellite growers that are contracted uh, to ourselves. We have composting facilities and pack houses across that geography. And just to give you an idea of the scale of production that the company deals with on a weekly basis, we produce and sell 1,800 tonnes of mushrooms a week. Okay, I'll say that again. That's 1,800 tonnes of mushrooms a week. And a mushroom is not a dense material, so that is a lot of mushrooms. And that turns itself into 75 40-foot trucks a day, leave our pack houses. And we are a business-to-business -business supplier, completely vertically integrated. And you can see that's a million retail units that we sell on a daily basis. In terms of the company, we are, as I said, completely vertically integrated uh, and we, complete, we, we, we own element, every element of the supply chain. We are a compost producer. Um, we, take, we are a sustainable company at our very core and at our heart because we take agricultural byproducts, primarily wheat straw, a byproduct of agricultural production. We take horse manure and we take chicken litter and we formulate mushroom compost to make a fresh mushroom product. We own every element of that. So we make the compost, we sell the compost, we sell the compost to third parties, we grow the mushrooms, we pick the mushrooms, we pack the mushrooms, we stick somebody else's label on the mushrooms and we ship the mushrooms directly to, to the retail stores. We have an extremely strong commitment to, to R&D and over the last five or six years we've invested heavily in uh, world-class facilities based up in uh, our headquartered site in Thai Holland up in Monaghan and we have over 51 um, scientific staff based at our location there across uh, three different uh, world-class lab, lab facilities. And we are the only company in Europe that has not only a patent protected position to uh, produce vitamin D enhanced mushrooms, but we are the only company in Europe that has European Union approval to sell vitamin D mushroom based products. So anything got to do with vitamin D enhanced uh, mushroom products, we have Novel Foods EFSA award to be able to, to, be able to do that. And we have exclusive access then to, to a mushroom strain which has unique properties from a, from a taste and a nutritional point of view. So it is a mushroom that is higher in protein and it's also a mushroom that has uh, a different textural feel and a, and a meatier flavour. So, so it would be akin to the chestnut mushroom that you see, you see in the shops these days. And to give you an idea then of what the products actually look like, um, you can see there the, the vitamin D mushrooms in the middle there, which is uh, sold through Marks and Spencers. So Marks and Spencers were our innovation partner and launch partner for the vitamin D mushrooms, and they're now widespread across Tesco and also SuperValue. Um, and in fact, the vitamin D mushrooms have, have yielded such demand for us that we actually ship vitamin D mushrooms to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So probably one of the geographies that you'd least expect vitamin D products to be, to be shipped to, but actually Scandinavia and but then also high, um, high sun countries also yield some of the highest demand for vitamin D products. And then you can see our latest, one of our latest products is actually a vitamin D and selenium enhanced mushroom product uh, as well. In terms of the research themes and, and priority areas that we look at, and, and before, I, before I go through this in detail, I want to give you a, a bit of context in terms of why a mushroom company is, is involved in such heavy R&D and such a strong investment in, in R&D. So back in the late 80s, early 90s, our owner and CEO, Ronnie Wilson, uh, you know, it's a family owned and operated company, um, recognised that to grow the business, he'd have to own every element of the supply chain. And from that, he could control every element of the cost and build the business as a result. 
The next stage he realized a number of years ago that to keep the business sustainable and growing was investment in research and development. And you can see now, in particular, the most outwardly product of that R&D is the vitamin D mushrooms. But in terms of the work we do, it is across many different lines, and a lot of our R&D research is actually exploited internally rather than necessarily externally give you a flavor then in terms of the, the, the pillars of research that we, that we look at. We do research across a pillar of food, which is vitamin D mushrooms, vitamin B, B mushrooms, and also mushroom powder products. From a horticultural point of view, we look at biocontrol, we look at compost augmentation, and um, also replacing, replacement of the casing layer. So if any of you are familiar with, uh, with mushroom production, there is a layer of peat compost which sits on top of the mushroom compost and that that's delivers huge value in, in mushroom production but obviously you know, using peat for anything within Europe is not, uh, uh, is not necessarily a, a good sustainability story and we also want to look at reusing our spent mushroom compost because it's still full of cellulosic sugar, hemicellulosic sugar and also lignin fractions as well as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And then the third strand is slightly, uh, uh, is aligned with our fungal technology, but definitely you might not have expected a mushroom company to be, to be doing, and that's biotechnology. And that's enzyme discovery, looking at new fungal production organisms, and also looking at valorizing the waste mushroom stalks to uh, isolate the protein, the beta-glucan, and the chitin com components that are contained within, within the mushrooms. And then in terms of how we enable those, you can see the different projects and we have core competencies to be able to, to, be able to deliver on those. So now Monaghan Biosciences, and which, is the, which is the area that I, that I look after. Monaghan Biosciences is effectively uh, an enzyme discovery and applications company. Uh, focused on using enzymes to create higher value products from low value feedstocks. So, Initially, the genesis of the company was to look at using industrial enzymology to valorize the spent mushroom substrate, so the compost after mushroom production. And this compost, as I said, is full of valuable components that still exist, primarily the cellulose, the hemicellulose, and the lignin, or sor sources of C6 sugar, C5 sugar, and polyphenols. We then wanted to take a look at enzymes, and if you're not aware of enzymes, well, enzymes are nature's catalysts, and they can catalyze reactions many degrees of magnitude faster than many chemical catalysts can. Could we then look at combining enzymatic solutions and our spent mushroom substrate as a feedstock, then actually to release our C5 and C6 fermentable sugars? And we demonstrated that we could su successfully do that, and there's a, a patent being pro prosecuted at the moment in terms of, in terms of that. However, during this work, we, we identified that our enzymes, because they operate in effectively an environment which is not necessarily a natural environment for enzymes to operate in, they could have applicability outside of our spent mushroom compost. And so we started testing other different types of biomass. To be able to enable that testing and the areas that we do to actually work that, we have a commercial applications team which manages what our customer demands is and the research lines on which we, on which we operate. Uh, under my own control, I have 21 uh, staff, uh, technical staff, working across strain development, protein engineering, fermentation technology, and also development of new an analytical techniques. To deliver on that, as I said, we've state-of-the-art resources that opened in January 14, and you can see we've a, we've a highly qualified staff with, with a number of PhD and master's qualified sci scientists. Not only that, we have significant industrial and enzymology experience as well as biotech uh, experience as well, and an international collaboration network across US, Canada, Australia, Malaysia, and across Europe as well. And we have not only licensed in technology, but we also have developed our own proprietary technology as well. In terms of the core markets in which we target, well, basically hydrolysis of any types of biomass. So corn stove or corn fibre, um, sugarcane bagasse, uh, corn, uh, cotton stalk, spent mushroom substrate. If it has cellulose in it, our enzymes can break it down. We specifically target, I suppose, what, we, what are called either 1.5 or 2G sugars, but not only 
getting the sugars all the way to their monomer, but also the long chain polysaccharides or the oligomers there as well. We specialize in thermophilic fungal enzymes, basically, and we are also at the moment uh, developing a thermophilic fungal organism that other companies can license from us to be able to produce their own enzymes for their own applications. What do we have in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the strength of our offering? Well, we have very strong backing from, uh, from our parent company. We are in a, a very enviable position in that uh, we do not need to be going looking for new sources of equity to fund the research lines that we want to exploit. We have a strong core of technical ability and competence to collaborate with different consumers across industrial targets and we have a proprietary biobank of organisms and enzymes on which we can exploit. And we are extremely uh, well versed in terms of exploiting local, national and also European funding opportunities uh, with that. As I said, biomass hydrolysis is our specialty. Not only that, but using enzymes that are thermoactive and thermostable to be able to break down those enzymes into higher value products. Um, we have significant experience in genetics, protein, uh, protein engineering and also genetic engineering and have worked across a wide range of different organisms from bacteria, yeast and also fungi. And we have a very flexible business model in terms of engaging with external collaborators. Now, to give you some actual results of what, uh, of, of what we've been able to demonstrate, and these were, these were results that we demonstrated with, uh, with an, American, uh, an American biofuel producer uh, deep, in the, deep in the Midwest of, uh, of, of Iowa. What you can see here is testing our enzyme cocktail on corn, uh, on corn stover uh, that at 65 degrees Celsius and after only 20 hours we were able to yield, so from the red trace there against the commercial cocktail, we were able to get a yield of over 80% liberation of the C6 sugars within that biomass versus only 40% of the next, uh, the next best commercial offering. Not only that, the robustness profile, pH robustness profile of our enzyme cocktail was far superior that uh, of, the, of the commercial offering. Not only that, so we could reduce the processing time. The industry standard at the moment is 72 hours. We were able to achieve the same results, uh, or we were able to achieve these results after only 22, uh, after only 22 20 hours. And as I said there, we've got a much more robust uh, pH profile. And in terms of giving you an idea of what this actually looks like, and I think James might recognize the, the brown liquid sitting on top of the, on top of the uh, this is actually a corn fiber sample that you can, that you can see here. On the left-hand side is you have a macerated uh, corn fiber, which has had the starch released from it. And believe it or not, there actually really is. The enzyme cocktail mix is already in that, uh, is already in that um, uh, sample. And after only 20 hours at 65 degrees centigrade, you can see that all the biomass has been effectively reduced into a pulp. And now you've got this brown liquid which is sugar rich in C6 and C5 sugars as a result. So I'll wrap up there and uh, if anybody has any questions or anybody wants to uh, catch up afterwards, please just give me a shout and thank you very much for your attention.